This is Scott Johnson, host of the What Was That Like podcast, and you're listening to Jim the Podcast Sherpa on Too Many Podcasts. It's theme week. It's theme week. It's theme week. Back in 1963, Dean Kay and Kelly Gordon wrote a song called That's Life, and that song contained the lyrics, Each time I find myself flat on my face, I pick myself up, and get back in the race. You may have known it when you heard it sung by the chairman of the board, Mr. Frank Sinatra. But guess what? That's the theme of this week's show. No, not Frank Sinatra. Resiliency. The comeback. And boy, we have a guest that you're going to like right here this week on Too Many Podcasts. Mr. Bruce, please sound the gong. Welcome to Too Many Podcasts, the podcast about podcasts. Now, podcasting from the Sherpa Chalet on Mount Podcastia, he's your host, Jim, the podcast Sherpa. That's right. It's more exciting than a Jennifer Aniston debut on Instagram, and you're right here at the place. That's right. I'm not making this up, guys. You know Jennifer Aniston. You know The woman that books my proctology appointments, you know, she's about, I don't know, about 70 or so, missing a tooth, tends to kind of spit when she talks sometimes. Yeah, that that Jennifer Aniston. Oh, wait a minute, what? Oh, oh, I didn't know that one had a Instagram page. Oh, yeah, she might have a couple more followers than me, I'm I'm, I'm presuming. Well, good luck to the both of you. So, uh, welcome to Too Many Podcasts. And yes, I am Jim, the Podcast Sherpa, as you've already heard twice, welcoming you back for another Sherpalicious week. I hope you're all doing well. And I know I brought it up last week, but I'm bringing it up again this week. Tomorrow, you can listen to the promo for the next podcast that we will be presenting sometime in 2020. I'm hoping either January or February, and it is called The Expert Factory. And I will provide the link to you in the show notes. I believe it's www.anchorfm slash the expert factory. It's not on all of the podcasting platforms just yet, but it will shortly and we'll let you know as soon as they debut on those other platforms. And I will provide it here as well through uh, my social media if you want to check it out. So either way, you'll get to hear it, and I hope that when you hear it, you will subscribe now, so when the new shows do come out next year, you'll get them right on your podcast app. There's nothing else that you'll need to do. It would be nice and simple. But I'm sure if you had a question to ask me, it might be this question. Who's our guest today, Sherpa? I'm so glad that you asked. His name is Howie Craw, and he hosts... How We Doing It podcast, and it is about resiliency. I think you're really going to like talking to him. I had such a great time speaking with him, and uh, we both have a New York connection, as you will hear from our interview. But it was just so much more than that. He was just a wonderful person to talk to. A lot of energy, a lot of fun, and just a super interesting guy to listen to him speak. He's a powerful speaker. You know, I know he's hoping for a TED Talk soon, and I hope he gets it. I think he would be spectacular. But before we go and talk to Howie, don't forget that this podcast is being brought to you by Audible, and you can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash Sherpa. And there's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Lots of stuff to choose from. I'm sure you will find something you will absolutely enjoy. And who knows, maybe one day Howie will have a book out. He already had on one of his cool How We Doing It t-shirts. And I really like that. The guy is definitely a fashion icon. And he's not even trying to be. All right, I'll stop babbling and let's head on down to the Sherpa Chalet for my conversation with Howie Kra of How We Doing It. And then we'll find out how he does it. I was looking for some guests for my show. Got a post from a very nice lady named Amber. And she was telling me, about who and that she works for. Gave me a link to his website, so I looked into it. I was checking out his podcast. And I got to say, out of all the guests that I've had on the show that I've been very lucky to speak to, I found his story just amazing. So I'm glad that I got to hook this up. And he's here tonight. His name is Howie Craw. He hosts a podcast called 
How are we doing it? And he's down in Florida. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Jim. I appreciate you having me on here. And uh, yes, I am in sunny Florida. Just returned from uh, the start of fall in New York. It felt nice, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's with Florida, it's just like still hot. <laughs> I think it's always hot here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no escaping it. It's like hot and not as hot. I guess that's the uh, the range of temperature. Yeah, something like that. But, you know, the thing that really makes it special is um, I live right near the beach. So in the mornings, I find that to be incredible that I'm out there and I'm able to see sunrise. It's it's really because it's different every day and it's kind of like life. You know, life is so challenging and different every day. It's never exactly the same and you don't know what the day is going to bring. And when I turn the corner and get to the beach, you don't know what the water is going to be like or the wind. And it just truly is different and it's magical. But the sun does come up every day. That's true. At least it's something you can always count on. That's right. In, in this world we live in, that's something we can count on. I don't know how many other things, but the sun rising is something you can count on. Like I said, I was fascinated by your stories. So I was wondering if you could share your story with the audience. So uh, we said we'd keep it to a half hour. My story could take 24. <laughs> so I'll give you some of the highlights. I was uh, born in New York City, raised till second grade in Long Island. And then we did a reverse commute and somehow ended up growing up in Brooklyn. While in Brooklyn, uh, attending Marine Park Junior High School, better known as PS 278. That's not private school. That's public school. Um, in eighth grade, I suffered a really bad accident. Um, unfortunately, I was run over by a school bus. And that one day, that one moment changed my life forever. And after many months of surgeries and in the hospital and I almost lost my leg, they were able to save it. But they told me I'd never walk again. Uh, with the help of family and some doctors, I learned again how to walk. I overcame all the odds. And today I'm proud to say that I'm an adrenaline athlete that loves marathons, triathlons. And I learned at a really young age how to be resilient. And I think that resiliency really worked well for me throughout different stages of my life. Life is always challenging. Um, I'm a music guy. We spoke about that earlier. There's a Grateful Dead song. Um, it starts out, when life looks like you're on easy street, there'll be danger at your door. I don't know anybody that lives on easy street. Do you? I <laughs> can't say that I do. So when people think just because people have the financial wherewithal is always something. So that accident taught me to grow up at a young age. And then I took it to work with me. You know, I, I went away to college. I came back and I went to work on Wall Street and I had a, a really nice career on Wall Street, but obviously stressful, unpredictable. And, and you know, just a, 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 a very you need to have resiliency to be in that world. And, and from that, you know, raise three children. Um, you need to be resilient in a relationship. Unfortunately, that relationship didn't work out so well, but the three children are spectacular. Best achievement of my life. And um, along the way, you know, I left traditional Wall Street to get involved in startups and had a lot of success and had a bunch of failures. So we had companies go public that did really well. And then I have a bathroom full of wallpaper. So it works both ways. And again, um, it's resilience that gets me through those ones that didn't work because you never stop trying. You got to keep going. You can't ever give up. And um, I moved down here to work on a company, an opportunity to help build a company. Sales has always been my strength. And when I got here, something came about me that I've, I've always done some public speaking and I've always work to motivate people, help people. And my, my strength is really in sales and growing companies. And when I got here, I, I really started to think about doing more of that. And I ended up at the beach and I took my phone out 
And it was this sunrise was amazing. And I started to share it with a few friends and they started to like it. And there was a guy there from Long Island, your home, and he was wearing a jet shirt. And I'm like, how could you wear a jet shirt? They're an abomination. I'm a Jets fan. I'm a tortured <laughs> Jets fan. And the guy says, what do you mean? I'm a fan. And I'm like, well, take, I, you, know, I, you don't have to wear that shirt. So he goes, be quiet. I go, what, why are you telling me to be quiet? I'm on the beach. He goes, I'm doing a Facebook Live. I didn't even know, Jim, what Facebook Live was. You know, I'd see people at concerts and ball games holding their phones to other people to watch. I'm always like, why don't they just watch the concert? Why are they so enamored with sharing it with everybody? So I, I turned my phone on and I started talking about the weather and the waves. And then I didn't do it for a couple of days. And a few people reached out to me and they said that was really inspiring. It was helping me. But why don't you turn it around and be in it? So somewhere around, I'm going to call it March 1st, I um, went to Anaheim on business. And I was just reading about Disney. And there were like so many great quotes about him not giving up. And I did my broadcast with some quotes and then told the story. And I started to create a format. And now I I haven't missed a 7 a.m. live broadcast on Facebook, 655 on Instagram since then. So the number's like in the 230s now. So 230 straight days, I draw upon a word. The word could come from my experiences. It could come from something I read, somewhere I travel. I bring some quotes. I'm trying to make more of my own quotes. And then I talk about life in four stages. So the the following on that has really been great, which has morphed now into a podcast. And the theme of my podcast, my name is Howie. Everything I do is how we doing it is about resiliency and it's about helping people and companies get out of their own way and on the podcast i'm blessed to have athletes entertainers business leaders regular people and everybody's got a story of like getting knocked down and so how do you turn is it is resiliency something that you're born with or is it a muscle you can develop there's a lot of science around it so i now have become this master i laugh but you know a, a, a knowledgeable through experience how's that of resiliency my life has had uh its fair share of curveballs and i'm still standing i'm still playing and i'm feeling great about where i'm at and um, the journey continues. And now I'm with you in uh, Podtopia. And, you know, I'm, I've, I've made it. It's the pinnacle for me. I'm on your <laughs> podcast. So this is this is things are really good. Welcome to Mountain Podcast. Yeah, how are you? Ah, I had to climb all the way up. First, it was Kilimanjaro. I was working on Everest and I got to you. <laughs> On your website, there is a video of you giving a great speech to a crowd about what stops people from being resilient, like when they kind of play the blame game. You know, people think that it's permanent, pervasive. It's it's because of me. You know, you, you put these mindsets in and that you stop yourself from being able to keep going. And people just don't want to put the hard work in. So they give themselves this mindset. And I know the thing that you're talking about, because I use that, I'm trying now, I'm using that to get on a TEDx stage. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, you know, I was giving the speech and they did a nice job of uh, professionally putting it together for me. But that exact thing that you're talking about is the P's, you know, and it's, it's people think that when they do something, it's permanent. It's pervasive. It can't ever change. It's got to be this way forever. It's all it's all head trash because it is what it is. Things happen, you know, and, and, and you got to go forward. And the thing that I, you know, when people are ready to quit, I always say this just on the other side of where you're going to quit is the reward. 
but you'll never get it if you quit. So keep going. You're almost there. And it might not be exactly the next day, but it might be the day after the next day or maybe even a month after the next day. But quitting is just it's not an option. What would you advise people to do who, like you said, if they get that kind of mindset where it's always going to be like this, how, how can you get them to change their way of thinking? I think that's a great question. And for me, it's reaching out for others, because whatever you or I are experiencing, trust me, somebody else is experiencing or has experienced the same thing. We're not alone. We're not inventing the first mental, what's the word I want to use, the mental challenge. We're not inventing this thing that we think the world's coming to an end, whatever it is, you know, somebody else has been through it. So isolation is the worst. Trying to figure things out on your own alone when your head's not in the right place is a formula for disaster. What works is if you have a friend or two or if you have a meaningful relationship in your life and you could be honest and open and you could share what it is that's stopping you. What's not letting you get to the other side of what you want? What's that fear? Because on the other side of fear is everything you ever wanted. So how do you remove that? For me, it's doing good things. It's exercising, getting rid of some of the demons through exercise. It's meditating. And I need to get better at that. But some of the most well-grounded and most successful people not talking about financial, mentally successful, with beautiful relationships, great families. They, they spend time, mindfulness. And we got to get off that treadmill where it's the same thing every day and you think it's going to change. Here's another one. The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and hoping for a different outcome. Now, personally, a year and change ago, I wasn't in a good place. And my friend would call me every day and say, what are you doing different today? And I had to be accountable because if I told him I did the same thing, he would use that line on me every day. And I don't want to hear that line. So long winded answer. Let people in. Reach out to friends and community. And if you're alone and you don't have anyone in the world, Join a group on Facebook or join a group anywhere. People will talk to you. People will help you. You actually kind of answered my next question about what you do to stay positive with exercising and meditation. Well, how do you deal with any setbacks that, that may come your way? Because, I mean, it happens to all of us. Uh, setbacks are a part of life. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, as we're talking, there's a baseball game on in the background and baseball players if they hit 300, that means for every 10 times they get up, they get three hits. They fail seven out of 10 times. And sometimes those failures are monumental. Bases loaded, game on the line. But a 300 hitter is a superstar. So how do I handle setbacks? It's part of the game. Can't take them personally. You give it your best. You go in with a good attitude and just realize it's part of life. Nothing is perfect. Nothing very rarely goes exactly according to plan. Everything takes longer than it's supposed to. And just deal with it. And I, I'm a hard critic. You know, you and I were talking before. This is new territory for me, having a podcast, being on social media, showing up every day. And, you know, on one hand, I'd like a million new subscribers every night. But it doesn't happen like that. So I have to be patient and I have to just keep putting in the hard work and believe what I tell others that if I show up every day, good things are going to happen. That's a big word for me. Show up. Because you, you said before, what do you tell somebody who's stuck? And I said they can't isolate. Worse than isolation is if they don't show up. you got to show up. That's what makes you accountable. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't care if you, you, you're unemployed. Go to a coffee shop. Get out of your house. You know, you have to show up. If you want to 
get into shape, get to the gym. Even if it's not a if it's not a great workout, it's better than no workout. Because if you do a couple of mediocre workouts a few days in a row, it's going to lead you to a better workout. But the longer you procrastinate to get to the gym, you're never going to get any results. That is very true. You know, talked about having a positive mindset. Are you also a spiritual person too, would you say? I wouldn't say, but I lately through my Howie doing it, um, I'm, I'm actually meeting people that are pretty spiritual and I'm like, spending a little bit of time. But I am, uh, I would say, triple A. I'm full of energy and I'm pretty hyper. And it's like the spiritual stuff. You got to slow down and smell the roses. And I'd like to do more of that. And I'd like to tell you that I'm trying. But right now I'm running at so many different directions and it's it's not something I'm practicing, but I'm not against it and I'm around it. And the people that are into it are rubbing it on me a little bit. Okay. And it, it kind of feels good. And I know you uh, have actually been very open in your podcast that you've dealt with depression also and you went went through therapy. Yeah. And um, that was I started to touch on it when I said to you that um, I reached out to friends because I got to a place of isolation where my cell phone would ring and I would just go right in the habit of decline. At the end of the day, I'd have 15 decline phone calls. I'd go home. I didn't want to see anybody. And I was just very comfortable in my own spot. And a couple of friends wouldn't, wouldn't have it that way. They wanted me to be accountable to them. So two friends, all right, I'll let them in. I'll talk to them. I'll call them. I gave and gave one of them keys to my place. Come in, you know, make, you know, you got to get up. You got to go. And I, I dealt with it and I went for help. And I got to tell you that I really admire Howard Stern. A, I think he does the best interviews out there. And B, he talks about therapy like it's having a glass of water. It's no big deal. Remove the stigma. So on one of my podcast episodes, it's called Remove the Stigma because I did go and it helped. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I went for a long time and it, and it was beyond great. And, and you're able to work through your issues, your problems, and you get unstuck. So if you hurt your knee, you'd go to an orthopedic tomorrow. If you were eating tonight and your tooth cracked, you'd go to the dentist tomorrow. If you woke up and your TV was all blurry, you'd go to the eye doctor. Why is it when people's heads are jammed, which most people have a jammed head, I think of it like the LIE during a rain at rush hour driving east to the beach on a Friday <laughs> night. Right? You, That's a New you, York reference for those of you who don't get it. <laughs> that's a bad traffic jam, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You do anything to get out of that traffic jam, right? That's kind of like what your head feels like sometimes. So why wouldn't you go to see a professional therapist to say, unclog the traffic in my head? Yeah. That's how I looked at it. And I would recommend it to anybody. As long as you find the right person you feel comfortable with, nobody's judging you. They're there to help you. And that's what they do. And trust me, you know, like you think you're going to go in to see a therapist and like, oh, my God, how am I going to tell them my story? They'll think it's crazy. What do you think? They haven't heard it before. Like when you're done, you're like a PG version compared to what they probably hear. You know, I heard an interview with Howard Stern, who you mentioned. And he said, you know, well, I wasn't really doing well with the relationships in my life. He said, if therapy was making these relationships better, what's so wrong about admitting that you went? And he, you know, I think I'm not talking about his radio show, his interviews. Mm -hmm. I think they are spectacular. He gets people to talk and open up. And, you know, I think it feels like a big therapy session when he has them in there. That's what he's doing. You know, there's a word he's therapized. OK, right? he's been therapy arrived, however you would say it. <laughs> and um, so he goes ahead and, um, you know, he just um, treats his guests like they're in a therapy session and they and they enjoy it.
the Jerry Seinfelds, the Alec Baldwins, the David Spade, Adam Sandler. These guys come in there. They have relationships and they open up. And I, I really enjoy it. So I look forward to Howard Stern being on my podcast one day. So if you're listening, Howard, you're more than welcome. When I had Mark the Shark on, I had to call my episode, Hey Joe Rogan. So maybe I'll call this one, Hey Howard Stern, are you listening? I love that. That'd be great. <laughs> I was running through my brain. What can I call this episode now? Yeah, there you go. You just inspired me, my friend. There you go. You know, what's crazy is um, by the time this airs, the, the World Series will probably be over. But the Washington Nationals are going to the World Series for the first time in their history. And the MVP is Howie Kendrick. And they're wearing shirts all over Washington. This is how we do it. Mine's <laughs> how we doing it. But uh, I got to get to Howie Kendrick at some point. So if you can help me get Howie and Howard, it'd be greatly appreciated, Jim. <laughs> you get the whole monopoly on Howie's. <laughs> We're trying, right? Howie Mandel. <laughs> there you go. I'll have to think of a few more while we're doing our interview. You said that probably one of the roughest thing was when you were younger and you got run over by a bus and, you know, you had multiple surgeries, you know, and that was obviously one of the hardest things that you've ever had to deal with. What would you say was like the next hardest thing after that? Hmm. That's a great question. I have to think about that one a minute. You know, I mean, it would have to be. You know, I'd, I'd have to put it in the category of losing somebody you love. Or, you know, as much as, you know, the, the I, I very rarely ever talk about this, but, you know, I went through a divorce. And, um, you know, that's not something I ever wanted to do for my children. And that was very difficult, um, breaking up the family life. And everybody's healthy. Everybody's fine. But that was very difficult. And, um, you know, I would probably put that right up there, meaning that it was a you feel a sense of failure. You feel like you're letting down your children, which mean the world to me. And they're my closest relationships to date. So that's. Uh, you know, I mean, because because all the, the Wall Street financial, that's just money. And, you know, you could have a lot of it or you could have none of it. But if you don't have your health, big deal. Steve Jobs, Paul Allen. You know, I was just somewhere recently and I think it was in New York and there was a, a yacht that was parked by the World Trade Center. And somebody was like, oh, whoa. and then somebody said, yeah, I remember Paul Allen's boat. And I was thinking he's not with us anymore. Big deal. Right. That's true. It, it's so. So it's it's, you know, I'm about family. I'm about friends. And, you know, obviously you lose people in your life, your parents, you lose some close friends. That's really hard, too. I had a partner when I worked on Wall Street who was like a big brother and um, he's been gone a while now and he was taken in his 50s and it was just, you know, pancreatic cancer. And that was really, really hard and sad to see. But, um, you know, those are some of the tough things in life. Yeah. I, I think the younger me would have put more business, would have said, oh, that IPO that went public, that I should have made a billion, that only made $10. That, that I don't think like that anymore. I, I think with uh, growing up that you realize those things are not what's important. What's important are the relationships and the people in your life. You must have seen my script because my next question is going to be, what would today's Howie have told the younger Howie? Well, you know, so I didn't, I, I got another answer is that, you know, I speak a lot and I talk at companies and I talk about building businesses and building relationships. That's a big thing. And I think that the, the, uh, Older Howie would tell the younger Howie to stay put and put your time in, that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and that if you want to build something really good, whether it's a business or a relationship, you're going to put the time in, and you got to stay in it. And, you know, when I think about some of my professional moves, you know, I, I don't know why I always was trying for that next level that the one I was at wasn't good enough because they were pretty good. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, you know, 
relationships. I mean, I have so many friends for decades upon decades, you know, because I put the work in it and they put the work in. So it's great. So the the younger one would say the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Also, the the older Howie knows how to bounce back whenever it does get a little rough. Yeah, well, that's something that I've always had to deal with my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, for whatever reason, there's things that get thrown at you, curveballs, life, health, you know, and you deal. And um, I think so much, it's so much easier to deal when you have a good attitude. When you look at things and you see the opportunity in the problem or the lesson that's learned from the failure, you know, you can't. It's not a straight, you know, I laugh because my show is on resiliency, Mm -hmm. being resilient. So I say to many future uh, potential guests, I go, you know, Jim, you're probably not a candidate for my show. You're one of those guys who probably had a life. You were born and it was just a straight uphill, never had a bump in the road. It was just easy the whole way. So you wouldn't be a good candidate. (laughs) What do you say to that? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> I think everybody struggles in their own way. You know, whether there's unobtained goals and dreams. and Yeah, I think that, you know, um, like I said, I look at life in four buckets. And, uh, you know, we the first bucket is a career. Second is financial. Third is health. And the last is relationship. And inside those buckets, a lot going on. And, you know, you could have three cranking really well and one not and two good and two it's constantly needs work. They constantly have to work at it. And if you want relationships to work, you need two people to work at it. You can't fix things alone. And the and the, one of the most frustrating things is being this optimistic, positive you can't change people. You want to. You could give them advice, but you can't change them. They have to want to change. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. 100%. Right? It's got to come from within, right? Yeah. It's frustrating, you know, because I'm that guy who thinks I could fix things. But I've learned over the years, too, I can only lend advice I can't fix. You have to want to fix. I can only share my wisdom or advice. I have some friends that are older than me. I love hanging out with them. They have so much wisdom. I really appreciate it. You know, they've been through a lot. And, you know, that just their little tidbits are so priceless. In different generations, too, I think we're not kids, you know, either one of us. So I think we kind of look at the world a little bit differently than someone, say, like 20, 30 years younger than us. Well, I think the problem with 20, 30 years younger is technology. I love technology. It's great. Look what we're doing tonight, right? Sure. You and I, different locations. We're, we're talking. We could see one another. And it's great. But there's a problem. There's a disconnect that everybody's just so texting. And, you know, I laugh. Like, if you took the phone feature, the calling feature out of phones and just gave millennials the phone. They're fine. They don't have to make a call. Like it's so funny. And you know, I'm back in the dating world, and I I am texting with these women, and I'm like, I'm going old school. I'm calling, and I start with the call like, "Hi, it's Howie. I'm going old school. You feel like talking, or should I hang up and text you?" And they laugh. They think it's funny, but it's true. All right. Now, because we're both doing the podcast thing, I was curious as to what kind of podcasts you're listening to right now? You know, I recently uh, stumbled upon a few because I'm really trying to learn, you know, styles and things. Obviously, I thought yours is phenomenal. That's why I'm on it. Thank you for having me. (laughs) But um, I like the Happiness Lab. I like uh, another one was, uh, let me tell you, I was just listening to it the other day. I mean, I love NPR, how I built this. I really enjoy that. There's a there's a woman that I met and oh, wait, I don't want to put it on the U is you podcast. She's great. Julie Reisler. She's fun. She's great. You want to be the U is you. So like that's that. good. I like that. Um, trying to think. 
I have, um, I'll tell you that, um, oh yeah, Morning Brew, love it, it's great. Um, I was actually I, really good, um, it's called Business Casual. So there's a email that's put out and my daughter, who's currently getting a, a master's degree in business, she was an environmentalist major and she wasn't really into reading the business section. And she said, Dad, I finally found this great email called Morning Brew. So they have a recently released podcast. It's called Business Casual. I think that one's really good. I really enjoy that. And um, there's another guy, Thor Conklin. He does peak performance. And um, those are just some of them. I mean, and then... I'm really trying out a lot of different things. Um, I, I will tell you this, that um, there, there's so much on there and there's so many to choose from that, you know, finding ones that you like are, are really great. And so that happiness one, I really enjoyed that. And then, you know, to get my fix of sports, my good friend, the Kevin Sheehan show, he's uh, he's great. So he does one every day, and that's awesome. So I get my fix of sports from Kevin. We have this portion of the show called Shameless Self-Promotion. Shameless Self-Promotion. And uh, like I said, I would recommend your website, HowWeDoingIt.com. But uh, how else can uh, our listeners get in touch with you or follow you on social media or hear about anything else that you're doing? Well, I, I do a live broadcast every morning. If you happen to be in Delray Beach, come to the beach, Atlantic Avenue and A1A. I'm at Lifeguard Stand S3. But that's if you're here in Delray. And I travel a lot. But at 6.55 a.m., 6.55 a.m., how we doing it on Instagram. At 7 o'clock, I move over to Facebook, how we doing it. And then if you want to listen to my podcast, that comes out every Thursday. It's available everywhere. But if you're really not sure where to find it, you could go to my website, HowWeDoingIt.com. And that's H-O-W-I-E-D-O-I-N-I-T.com. And when you're there, you could just look for podcasts and you'll be able to pull down on the menu. So I think that's the best way until I have a national tour and speaking in large auditoriums. This is the only way you'll find me right now. <laughs> we'll keep an eye open for you in the meantime. So as I asked before, I was wondering if you could reach into your magic box and pull out a, a quote before we uh, before we say goodbye. You know, I have so many, but I'm going to go with this one. Change stimulates growth. There you go. Three simple words. But a lot of power to them. Change stimulates growth. Don't be afraid to make the necessary changes. They pay off. They're not easy. Sometimes they're hard. The harder they are, the bigger the reward. There you have it. Some words of advice from my guest, Mr. Howie Kra, host of How We Doing It. Howie, thanks so much. For coming Jim, down to the show. Great. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you'll come on mine. And uh, I look forward to continuing. You're awesome. Thanks. And I really enjoy what you're doing. Appreciate you having me on the show. Hey, I was just thinking about something. It's a good thing I'll be launching a podcast about experts. I think that one of my episodes should have an expert on how to read a calendar. The promo for the show will be on November 1st, not... October 31st, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is just Halloween. Just go out, get your candy. And then on Friday, you can hear the promo at anchor.fm forward slash the expert factory. It'll be that simple to find. And I'm sure it'll be on Spotify as well. And gradually as more stuff gets launched, uh, we will have more channels for it. And I will keep you posted on that. But we know that to listen to too many podcasts, you've got a whole bunch of choices, and you can rate and review us if you would, please, please, please. Okay, enough begging, enough being confused about calendars. Mr. Bruce, strike the gong, and let's talk a little bit about Sherpa suggestions for this week. And now it's time for Sherpa suggestions. Sherpa suggestions. 
Okay, here's a bunch of podcasts about resilience in addition to How We Doing It. I strongly recommend How We Doing It. It will definitely put you in a good mood. And I'm sure a lot of these other podcasts will too. We have Resilience Unraveled, The Road to Resilience, Real Life Resilience, Resilience is My Beauty, Resilient, there's a show called Survival, and also a show called Outperform. And we also finally have Success Through Failure with Jim Harshaw Jr. I think that's enough to make you feel resilient. I don't know, is there a limit on resilience? I'm not sure. What if I have too much resilience? Will I bounce off the walls? Hey, before we go, I wanted to share a little bit of good news for you. I just got a message today that our friend Mark the Shark Retorto posted the episode featuring his interview on YouTube. So I will post the link to that show on the show notes if you'd like to check it out. And it's basically the, the vocal track and you'll see pictures of a lot of the books. I know he's going to be doing a couple of other things with it, but uh, he was really kind and he actually told me that he's going to use an introduction that I did for him for his show on a regular basis. And thank you, Mark. You know, our listeners love to hear you and, you know, you always do great on our show and you are always welcome to the Sherpa Chalet, good sir. Okay, so what else? Oh, thank you for coming down this week to the Sherpa Chalet and checking out my interview with Howie Craw. Be sure to check out Howie's podcast, how we doing it? And it's definitely a podcast that will put you in a great frame of mind. He definitely is a fantastic speaker and he's a super nice guy, like I said earlier. Check it out. Like I said, hopefully he will end up getting to do the TED Talk that he wants to. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for my friend. Don't forget, you can follow me on social media on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Well, they're under too many podcasts. In the meantime, have a Sherpalicious week and I will see you guys next time around. Hope that you don't eat too much Halloween candy. And like I said, tomorrow, tomorrow's the day. Check out the promo. Okay, hold everything. It's not tomorrow. It's Friday the 1st. I have to get this right. When is that class about the calendar coming? And if you see the link, if you could share it on social media with your friends, I would really appreciate that. Let's make a lot of people aware about this podcast coming around, okay? Thank you so much. And until next time, I will see you next month. Viva la revolution! Mr. Bruce, show them the door, please. Bye. Thanks for listening to Too Many Podcasts. Please disperse. You can go home now. I said you can go home now. Viva la Chapalition! Viva la Chapalition! <coughs> oh. Yeah, I'll come back now, you hear? <laughs>